Michael, halfway into the uh, 2011 Oshkosh Extravaganza, the greatest show on earth. It, uh, it behooves us to stop by and, and see what's happening. It's new it's li at Lycoming. We've gotten some very good reports from our friends at the Kit Fox on their initial 233 experience. Tell us what's happening with the 233 program. Oshkosh is always a lot of fun. And I think, you know, this year our general theme was the four cylinders and the 233 and the whole light sport market, a big focus of that. We're at the stage of the 233 right now where we're moving out of, I would say, our OEM integration programs and moving more into a full rate production item for later this year so our OEMs can start delivering aircraft. Very pleased with the performance of the unit. Engineers did a great job in taking the weight out, consolidated on that. We're through our company mechanical tests into doing our paperwork for an ASTM. Kind of the update on that is we had some stitching programmatic issues. We have decided to go to an ASTM conformance on the engine. As the uh, FAA's whole reauthorization situation solidifies, we'll move into a Part 33. But we'll bring the unit into the market first as an ASTM qualified unit and really pleased that, uh, at the OEM reaction and they're getting flight hours on it and stitching things together. So it's no longer the announcement of the new engine, it's now the new thing is you know, it's showing up on aircraft and we're really pleased for that to be at this stage. One thing I think that needs to be emphasized is this is not a stripped down 235. This, this, is, this is a whole different beast. Yeah, no, this is, this is a new engine. It's a lot of weight out of a 235, but it's got a, a probably the most dramatic difference is the electronic spark ignition. We really took a uh, ground up approach on that one and took a look at what would we need to do to have a fully part 33 qualified, very simple, robust, very cost effective, high value unit on the spark ignition system. Essential features, a little bit more than what you have in a Magneto, but very easy to integrate, self-energizing on the aircraft, so you don't need ship's power to run the engine. It's got some safety logic that makes certain that you do have ship's power to start before the logic engages to be able to allow it to run. Kind of two timing settings, one for start and then an operational setting on the timing, but the electronics has come and the understanding and the robustness of electronics has come, so Consider this could be kind of the first building block of uh, electronic spark ignition on ASTM engines from uh, Lycoming and then eventually moving into a Part 33 certified engines. Now from the standpoint of the fellow operating it though, the nut on the end of the stick, what changes? Nothing. You hit the starter button, it will start faster. Uh, what you'll notice with the electronic spark ignition, you know, versus a magneto where you're doing mechanical points and timing, you're going to get a little more accurate spark on the engine. You have a different timing for start, so your start should be a lot easier on the start, and then it'll move into running, and then you should see it from there. Welcome to the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Real-time, 24-7 online audio and video programming, where aviation has been getting updated for over a decade. Distributing over 11,000 stories, features, audio and video programs every year. Only ANN covers aviation and aerospace with this much depth, insight and expertise. Check us out on the web at aero-news.net. How has the general LSA industry acceptance uh, impressed you so far? We're quite surprised. The, uh, you know, we know that we're a little bit heavier than some of the other offerings, but on the other hand, the increased displacement versus some other offerings and the thing gives a little more flexibility on the fuel type ranges that we'll need. This is not just a 100 low lead engine, it's capable of running on some lower grade fuels there. Overall, the response has been very positive. In taking the approach that we did, the demand on the auxiliaries in terms of oil cooling and stuff like that, lighter demand, it just, our, our kind of first mantra on this one was just make it simple. Simple to integrate, simple to use, and don't build in too many uh, bells and whistles. Keep it low expense, and that kind of was the guiding light on it. With every problem there's a solution, and with every solution there are lessons. What have you learned from the 233? I think the, the less, main lesson that we learned was that the uh, moving to, say, Part 33 grade certifiable electronics, uh, you know, Edison's 1% inspiration, 90-90% perspiration, <laughs> there's a lot of perspiration in, in getting these things to market. Uh, we would have liked to have it happened faster, but there's a lot of engineers and a lot of test engineers and quality folks and production folks that have got a lot of perspiration on them. So I think people shouldn't underestimate what it takes to get a unit qualified. What I also say is that there's a lot of systems engineering goes on, how the engine interacts with the airframe system. You want to make certain that uh, you, know, you lose ship's power, the engine's going to run. 
and that was one of the defining elements for us and uh, we pretty much hit the nail on the head here. If you own a Cirrus today or if you are considering the purchase of a new or used aircraft, consider this. Avidyne, in conjunction with the country's leading Cirrus sales and maintenance facilities, has launched the G3R9 program that combines the purchase of a late model, low time Cirrus aircraft and the addition of the Avidyne Integra Release 9 avionics suite for much less than you may have thought, and certainly much less than purchasing a brand new aircraft. G3R9, combining the best airframe, best engine, and best avionics for the best value. You can take a like homing anywhere and get it serviced. Uh, that's been an, an issue for some of the uh, lesser known engines or, or those that have not built up much of a service network. Uh, is, is your network ready to go on the 233? Yes. You might have heard of our authorized service center network that we launched a couple years ago. We moved that out in anticipation and ahead of the new product, so we've been setting up multiple authorized service centers. Distribution chain, we already can move work the standard distribution chain, but the, the ability to maintain this engine, to work on it, uh, even our operating, or excuse me, our maintenance instructions are all out there and ready to, to be able to use. So we've, you know, we, we launched the authorized service centers well ahead of the product launch to make certain that you can service it. A uh, lot of commonality in how you maintain this engine versus the 235. Of course, you don't have magnetos, but all the other elements pretty much basically very straightforward. But what's the future for this engine? I mean, I realize you're just getting this thing in, uh, into a production mindset and all, but you got to be thinking what's next. Well, I think, you know, the first step on the engine is the base certification and keeping true to what, you know, the light sport and kit market wants, just a very standardized, fit for purpose product offering. I think the bigger question is more what happens to our other engines after what you've seen, what we could do on here. So we get this engine fielded, we have the electronic spark ignition out in greater deployed form on this, and uh, you can expect that that technology is going to roll towards our other products. The other thing is on this engine, the experimental versions already offer a fuel injected version. To be quite honest, a fuel injection system is more weight and more complexity on the aircraft than the vertical updraft. So we're going to be watching really what the market is looking for in terms of those enhancements and see what we can do in terms of upfitting this. But uh, the market response for this version has exceeded expectations. So we got some work to do in, in catching up with the production demand on this. And then we'll be continuing to introduce enhancements on this engine, but as well as rolling what we've learned on this one to the, to the 320 and the 360 line as well. Michael Kraft, uh, halfway through Oshkosh 2011. You are, of course, in charge of one of the best toy stores in all of general aviation. We thank you for your time, sir. Thank you very much.